By the grace of Jesus Christ, my brethren, let us read today from uh, the book of Samuel, the first. First book of Samuel, chapter 23. Chapter 23. First book of Samuel, chapter 23. Then they told David, saying, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Calah, and they are robbing the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up and attack the Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and save Calah. But David's men said to David, Look, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we go to Cala against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord once again, and the Lord answered, Arise, go down to Cala, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David and his men went to Cala and fought with the Philistines, struck them with a mighty blow, and took away their livestock. So David saved the inhabitants of Calah. Now it happened when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David at Calah, that he went down with an ephod in his hand. And Saul was told that David had gone to Calah. So Saul said, God has delivered him into my hands, for he has shut himself in by entering a tau, town that has gates and bars. Then Saul called all the people together to, for war to go down to Calah to besiege David and his men. When David knew that Saul plotted evil against him, he said to Abiathar the priest, Give the ephod here. Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has certainly heard that Saul seeks to come to Calah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Cala deliver me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Cala deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver you. So David and his men, about six hundred, arose and departed from Cala and went wherever they could go. Then it was told Saul that David had escaped from Cala, so he halted the expedition. David stayed in strongholds in the wilderness and remained in the mountains of the wilderness, Ziph. Saul sought him every day. But God did not deliver him and deliver him into his hand. So David saw So David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a forest. Then Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the woods, and strengthened his hand and God. And he said to him, Do not fear. For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Even my father Saul knows this. So the two of them made a covenant before the Lord, and David stayed in the woods, and Jonathan went to his own house. Amen. When God searched to find a man, through whom he would, cre he would create his kingdom, the kingdom of Christ on earth, but also the kingdom of Christ forever and ever. It was not easy at all. It was not easy for him to find a man who would have the characteristics that God wanted. And the characteristics that God wants are none other than faith, love, and hope. Faith in the Word of God, love toward His brethren, and hope, the true hope that is the anchor of our soul 
for it is safe and secure in Jesus Christ, that God is the one who works, the will and to do in, the, uh, in our hearts so that man may do and be pleasing before God. When he found him, he cried out. God cried out by saying, I have found a man, the son of Jesse, who is a man according to my heart, and he will do all my will. And indeed, David, even though he found himself in a very difficult and crucial situation, critical life situations, being persecuted by King Saul, being driven away by him, he was always victorious. And he was always victorious because he had a great secret. He did nothing without asking God and without God answering him. As he got, David always asked the Lord, and the Lord always answered him, as he always answers everyone who in sincerity and holiness, with faith, love, and hope, or asks him. He had this beautiful characteristic that he created always in his life conditions of blessing through the name of the Lord of hosts. And this is the message today that we create conditions of blessing in our life, in our family, and in our church, and our surroundings. God is ready to do a lot more than we can ask for or understand. God has a good will toward us. God has good plans for every one of us. Many times, indeed, he reveals his plans. As, for example, he revealed it to Jonathan, who was a holy, blessed man in the presence of God who loved David, and David loved him greatly. And God revealed to him what would come after him, his future, because he was beloved of God, because he loved God. But he never thought of creating conditions of a good future, of blessings in his life, Even though he knew the will of God, he did not ask God about what to do so that his will may be fulfilled. So God, for David, had prophesied that he would become king. But this thing did not quiet David down. He'll make me king so I don't do anything now. On the contrary, in order for him to make me king, I will walk in all his word and all his will and I will always ask him. If he did not this characteristic, would he become a king? Never. Because God does that which he has planned when man accepts the planning that God has made by asking God. Not only once, but every time. David asked the Lord, at some point, it was heard that the Philistines were making war in Cana, and they were uh, plundering the threshing floors of the brethren. So with love for his brothers and sisters, he went not from his own initiative to help his brothers who were of the tribe of Judah, to help his brethren by defending them from the Philistines. But... He never went with the impulse of his heart. And this, my dear brethren, is the crucial point that we may create conditions of blessings or not. He definitely loved his brethren. He definitely wanted, and the proof that he wanted to help them was that he asked the Lord. Lord, shall I go to defend and to help my brethren and the town of Caleb that are being that are suffering under the Philistines, the uncircumcised. And God said, go. But as men with human logic said, of course not. We're in danger already in the wilderness of Judea and suffering. 
How much more if we find ourselves captured in the city of Keilah, even if we beat the Philistines? And David realized that they were right, because indeed they were right. What they presented was right, and it was proven afterward. But what matters is not what we say, our logic, our righteousness, and the rightness of our heart, of our thought. All these things bring the man of God into uneasiness. Why? Because the Word of God assures us, and I want us to read this thing together, my dear brethren. Let us read from the book of Isaiah the prophet, chapter 55 and verse 8. God is speaking here. God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. What, I, what you are thinking is not what I am thinking. Nor are my ways, your ways, your decisions and your work, is not what I decide, what I do, and what I will act. You must learn today, and David knows this, but Jonathan doesn't know it. You must learn today that for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, your decisions, and your works. And my thoughts are so much higher than your thoughts. And pay attention to the reason why. For as rain comes down and the snow from heaven and shall not return there, but waters the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth that expresses my ways and my thoughts. Only the word of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit express, undoubtedly, the ways and the paths of the Lord. And I read again, Thus shall be my word that goes forth from my mouth. You shall, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it, in my paths. The good thoughts, the good will that God has, the word of God will bring it to pass. When man submits to the word of God, and God reveals His ways and His path to him. For you shall go out from the way of your suffering with joy, if you walk according to my wills and according to my thoughts. If you walk according to my, way, my word, you will go out with joy from the place of your suffering, and you will be led out with peace into the land of blessing. That is the secret by submitting to the Word of God and seeking the voice of the Holy Spirit, you will come out of the place of captivity of affliction with joy and you will be led into the place of blessing with peace. And not only that, but also all your surroundings, the mountains, the hills, will be filled with singing and all the trees will clap their hands. And the result, instead of the thorn that is in your life, as since you follow seeking my voice and my word, submitting to my voice precisely and to my word, instead of the thorn that happens in your environment, cypress trees will come. Instead of thorns, cypress trees will come. And instead of briars, shall come up the myrtle tree. For this is a sign for the name of the Lord, and it shall not be cut off. The sign of the Lord is the absolute transformation in every one of us individually, in, our, in his family, and in his environment, only when he walks 
by seeking the Lord, the voice of the Lord, and submitting to the voice of the Lord, proof of it being David. This was a man who was persecuted, he was weak, from a king persecuting him. He has faith, he has love, he has hope in God. And that is why he asks God before he decides to do anything. And while his men tell him, don't go there, we're in danger. They are uh, convinced that what he's telling him is sensible, but they are not convinced by what he decides on doing. So for that reason, he prays again. And again, God tells him the same thing. Arise, go. I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. So he went and he triumphed. So for that reason, it's not that there will not be any traps. Saul find out, a man of the enemy, a king of Israel, but a man of the enemy. And he thought that in his imagination, in his irrational behavior, that God has delivered him to me. God has delivered David into my hand because he's locked in a place where it has gates and bars. So I will kill him easily that he wanted it so much because anger and hatred had filled his heart from the spirit of wickedness that had entered him. And God informed David. And God, David was informed, therefore. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't terrified. But he said, I will ask the Lord again. He prayed, and he said, Lord, I heard with all certainty that David, that Saul will attack Kayla. Will he truly attack? And if he does attack, the citizens of Kayla that I have delivered and I have helped them will deliver me into his hands? And God says, yes, he will attack and they will give them into your hands. He will give you into your hands. Sorry. Now, triumphant from Kayla, he runs, not out of fear. He did not go to Kayla fearful, nor by an impulse of his heart. His heart because he has compassion for his brethren, he says, go, but he wants God to tell him to do so also. His heart tells him, I trust my brethren and Caleb because I helped them and they will defend me. But God tells him, no, they will not defend you. Now, is it ever possible, David, to make a mistake? No, but he's a man. But he is governed by the Holy Spirit. He will never make mistakes. Is there a man who never makes mistakes? Of course. The person who always asks the Lord and to the one that God always answers. He never makes a mistake. He left. He went into the wilderness, to the wilderness of Ziph, along with the 600 men, like all this adventure. The, the important thing was that nobody perished. Nobody was wounded from his men, nor was anyone killed because God was with him. And God was with him because he asked the Lord. And the Spirit and in truth. And there where he was not without comfort nor terrified, because a man who is governed by the Holy Spirit, he is never desperate. He may be sad, He's never desperate, he's never disappointed, he's never afraid because the spirit that God has given to those who care about the voice of the Holy Spirit is not a spirit of cowardice, it is of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And there he went and comforted him, and comforted him in the name of, of the Lord, and he truly loved him, like David loved him. And he revealed to him the things that God showed him. The hand of Saul will not find you. And pay attention to this thing. It will not find you, not because the Lord defends you, that does defend you, but because the Lord governs you. Because you create conditions of defense and blessing as you care about the Word of God, about the will of God. The hand of Saul, my father, will not find you nothing. He will do nothing to you. 
and indeed my Father knows and I know as well, that God has chosen you to be king after my God, my Father. And I equally know, because God told me, that He will make me second after you. The result, He did not ask the Lord. He did not give up of being named Son of the King. He did not re receive instruction of the Holy Spirit. But he returned to his father as a son of a king, and he enjoyed whatever a son enjoys that is a son of a king. And David, the created conditions of blessing for his life, suffered out in the wilderness... But Jonathan, who did not think that in order for the promises of God to come into his life, he would have to walk, not live according to the Spirit, but to walk according to the Spirit, to walk exactly in the path of God, not as a foolish man, but as a wise man, knowing that always, especially in these latter times, the days are wicked. The result was what would follow. All the promises and the will and the good plans that God had for David, they were fulfilled, but even more. All the good will, the good plans and the promises that God had for Jonathan were destroyed. And Jonathan had the end of Saul, which he followed. And not the blessing of David, whom he did not follow. And here, my dear brethren, is something that is very important. The problematic person looks for the problematic person. So they can discuss things. The holy man looks for the holy man. The holy looks for the holy. And it is a good and great secret that we may understand how God sees us. With what man are you glad to discuss? Are you glad to have fellowship with him? Keep company with him. With the holy man of God? That is governed by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness? or with the man that enjoys this world and darkness of this world? Where do you find pleasure? With whom do you enjoy yourself? Problematic with the problematic or holy with the saints? There I will understand what in what shape my heart is because I will understand what my heart is like by the things that I like to hear. What do I want to hear? Do I want to listen to praise, to good things, the things that are place, pleasant to God? Or everything that is bad, everything that is wicked, and everything that is judgmental? What do I want to hear? What do I like hearing? Because out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth, but also the heart rejoices by the things that it enjoys to hear. David in the wilderness with the servants of God. Jonathan in the palaces with Saul. Your choice will have its results in your life. Today let us choose Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Let us choose a church that is holy, brethren that are holy, and let us repent and let us correct our ways so that the end of us may not be like Jonathan that was equal to Saul there where it not have been. Our end may be like the end of David, along with the servants of God, there where God had prepared before the foundation of the world for them to be. In other words, can God not do whatever He wants in our life? The answer is no. And who can stop Him? We can stop Him. 
Only we can stop them. God may have very good will for you and for me, that he does. Who will stop God from fulfilling in exaggeration and extreme the eternal weight of glory of his? I, if I do not accept the sorrow, the humility, the trial, the affliction that God has scheduled for me so that he may upgrade me and bring me closer to him and closer to him. But if my heart that is deceiving above all things and desperately wicked as it is, chooses the things that she wants, itself wants, then God can do nothing in blessing me. He is stopped because I do not walk in the path that he teaches me but I walk in the path that my heart teaches me and Saul and I don't know who else may God keep us my dear brethren because the days are last because we can no longer play with God we cannot quiet down that well we're going well if only God may help us that we may truly go well and we will go well when we ask the Lord always the result being that God will answer us always. Amen.